One of the most common questions that I receive from clients in my web training sessions is what is quantization? What is its purpose and how can I make use of it? Now, I've got a couple of videos on this topic, but they're several years old. So let's take an updated look at this topic. And hopefully this will help some of you who have been wondering what this quantization and quantize is all about. So when thinking of quantization, there are three main areas that I think are the foundation to understand. Our snap up at the top in our toolbar here, our quantize value here, which is at quarter note currently, and then our grid lines, which we can see, see here running vertically within the arrange view. Now within Studio One, our quantize settings and quantization can affect our audio, MIDI notes, and even some of our tools here. So let's start with taking a look at how it can affect placement of our audio events and MIDI parts. And for that, we'll hop over to the browser. Let's come to the loops tab. And I'm just going to left click hold and bring in a loop here. Now you can see this is one of the first areas that our quantize setting or quantize value is going to affect the placement of our audio files and loops that we bring in. You can see as I move this left or right, it's snapping to those vertical grid lines which are currently set to quarter notes. So here, let's just go ahead and put that at bar two. I'll go ahead and release with the left mouse. Let's close out our browser. And I'm gonna make this really large so we can see what's going on. I'll hold Shift and E to zoom in vertically. And then let's press E. Okay, again, so the first thing is the placement of our audio events and our MIDI parts will be affected by our quantize value here, which is quarter note and our snap. Our snap is turned on. If I turn our snap off, then I can freely move this wherever I'd like. If I go ahead and turn the snap back on, then as we saw a moment ago, this is going to snap to our quarter note grid setting. Now, if I were to change our quantize value to eighth notes, then you'll notice we're now, we have that snapping behavior. It's jumping to these eighth note subdivisions. Let's go ahead and put that back at two. So that's going to be the first area that your quantize value and snap affects and determines how this event or MIDI part is going to be placed within our grid lines here or our grid subdivisions. Now our snap and quantize value is also going to affect our trimming. So if I come to the left edge of this audio event, I'll just hover and we see we have these double arrows that appear. And then when I left click, hold and drag to the right, we are trimming to the eighth note subdivision. And as you can imagine, if I change this to quarter note, let's come over to the right hand side, hover at the edge, we have those double arrows, and now we're snapping to the quarter note subdivision. Now we could also kind of pause in the center here. This is kind of a new feature. We can actually, there's a point in the center of this subdivision where we can actually release it there, and it's not gonna snap to that quarter note value. Now the next thing we'll look at is splitting our audio events and MIDI parts at the grid. So let's right click on our audio event and let's come down to the bottom. We have event here and then over in this other side panel we have split at grid. Now I've assigned this keyboard shortcut there that I can just press whenever I have an event selected. But I'm going to go ahead and click once here and we can see now this audio event has been slit, split to our quarter note subdivision. Let's go ahead and control Z to undo that. I'll change this to eighth notes. Now I'm going to use my shortcut. And now we can see that it's splitting to our eighth note subdivision. We'll again undo. Now we actually have the ability to quantize audio within Studio One. And one way that we can do that is by selecting the event by clicking once, and then I'll just press Q on the QWERTY keyboard. And now we can see that this is quantized like so. Now this may not be the meth best method to do this process, uh, so we'll undo that. And if I'm gonna do something like that, then I would typically use the bend panel, which is here. So we can go ahead and open that up. And this is a bit beyond this tutorial, but we'll just go ahead and take a quick look. I'll analyze this, and now we can see Studio One places bend markers where it believes the transients are, we can then take the threshold down and make it more in line with the grid setting here. We can see that these bend markers are more along with the eighth note setting. And then now our action is set to quantize. And then I can go ahead and apply that. And we can see that now these notes that are being played are 
more locked in with our grid here. But again, this is beyond this tutorial, so we're going to undo that. Just know that this exists. I do have a tutorial for this, so you can take a look at the link up above here if you'd like to learn more. Let's go ahead and close out our Ben panel. Now I mentioned that our quantize snap and the quantize value are also going to affect our tools. So let's go ahead and take a look at that really quickly. Now right now we just have the arrow tool active and we can see as I hover, this is not really affecting the arrow here. But if I press 2 and switch over to the range tool, now we can see that we have this vertical line and that is snapping to our eighth note value. Let's go ahead and change that to quarter note. Now we can see it's snapping to that quarter note subdivision. And if I want, would like to select a specific range and really lock that range in according to our grid, then I can left click hold. That snaps there. B3 now. So we can see we've selected a range based on our grid setting here. And I can delete that out. Or I can switch to the range tool by pressing 1. And then I can drag this to another location like so. Now let's press 3 and split, switch to our split tool. And you can see we have that vertical bar again snapping to our quarter note value. So then we can make splits that are going to be very precise based on what we have set here. We'll undo. Now let's move on to the paint tool. This is another tool that's going to be affected by our quantize value and snap. Uh, so let's come to the bottom left corner in the track header here or our track column. Click once and we expand out automation. When we add audio tracks, we're automatically going to have volume and panning available, these lanes available to add automation. So in the default mode for the paint tool, we can just draw in information like so, freehand, and you can see that that's actually snapping to our quarter note subdivision. Let's go ahead and undo that and we'll change to, let's say, half a bar. And now we can see that that's snapping to half notes. We'll again undo. And then finally, just notice that we have this little downward facing arrow and I'll click on that. Come down to the sign. We can make use of these different shapes to draw in automation. So I'll choose the sign and we're on the panning here. So I'll come and left click hold and drag. And now we can see that we're adding a sine wave to our automation for the panning. So let's actually listen to what this sounds like. This automation is locked directly in with our grid of half notes. So we'll play this back. So if you ever wanted to add some automation and really lock it in with the grid settings and have it perform in a more rhythmic way to your song, then this is one thing that you can make use of. Uh, choosing the quantized value that you want, being sure that your snap is on, and making use of one of these different shapes that you have available. But of course, we'll go ahead and undo that. Let's go ahead and hide these automation lanes. And finally, we'll take a look at the bend tool here. So when we are adding bend markers, we can see we have that same vertical line that is snapping to our half note setting here. We'll go ahead and change this to quarter note. Okay, now we're snapping to the quarter note. And just to reiterate, if I were to turn the snap off, you can see we no longer have that vertical line that's jumping to those subdivisions. So let's go ahead and put that back on. We can also press in to turn that on and off. So let's right click on our event and we will turn on the bend marker view. And now when I click, we can see that our bend markers are being added to our quarter note subdivision. Now I can then hover on one of these bend markers and make some adjustments here to stretch or compress time stretch that audio and you can see as I get near the subdivision it is going to snap and you may not want that behavior so you can again turn your snap off I'll hover here and now I can really freely move this wherever I'd like to get the timing just as I'd like it all right let's turn off our bend marker view and we'll zoom out a bit on our audio track. We'll come over to the browser and let's bring an instrument in. We'll bring in the Mai Tai, close out our browser, and let's choose a preset. 
We'll just go with this bass 80s up and down. Okay, I'll press comma to take our playback cursor to the beginning of our song. And I'm gonna press caps lock to bring up the virtual keyboard here. Okay, we'll close out our Mai Tai and um, let's activate our click by pressing C. Let's pull this down a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and record some MIDI notes for this demonstration. So our click is on. I'm going to go ahead and press record. Okay, so we'll press spacebar to stop. Not the best playing, but we just want to see how we can affect our MIDI parts and MIDI notes with the quantization features. Let's caps lock to hide that virtual QWERTY keyboard. So we saw previously that we can select our audio event and quantize that audio by pressing Q. We have that same functionality with our MIDI. So this MIDI part, let's go ahead and select it by clicking once. After it's selected, I can again press Q and take note of our notes and where they start at. We can see that these are not actually on the grid lines. Well, this one is, but so this playing is a little bit early, but I can press Q and now we can see that all of these notes have been moved to the nearest quarter note value. So when you press Q, it's going to take note of what you have set here and move your MIDI notes. So again, I'll undo that. We can see that those move back. And while this is selected, if I press Q, so all of our notes are then moved to our quarter note value. Now the snap being on and our quantized setting here is also going to affect how trimming affects our MIDI part, just as we saw with our event. So I'll come to the left edge. We have those same double arrows and we can see that that's snapping to the quarter note subdivision. I'll go ahead and pull that in like so. If I come to the right, we can see we're snapping to quarter note subdivisions here as well. Now, one other thing that I'd like to mention about quantizing our MIDI notes is that we do have input quantize available. And we can find that up at the very top in our toolbar here, this IQ. So when we activate this, Studio One will actually quantize the notes while you're recording. So if your playing is not the greatest and you'd like to have Studio One quantize for you while you're recording, then you can achieve these same results in real time. So instead of recording and then selecting your event, pressing Q to quantize, you can activate this and Studio One will do its best to quantize at your current quantize value here. So for this, you're playing, you may want to have this set to something, a higher resolution like 16th notes or something like that, depending on how good or bad your playing is. You can always experiment with this. So we, let's go ahead and take that IQ off. And we'll go ahead and double click on our MIDI part to take a look at quantization and the quantize settings within the edit window. And we'll actually click on this up arrow to detach that. And let's go ahead and make this full screen. I'm going to hold control and then use my mouse wheel to zoom in here. Let's press W to zoom out a bit. So right now our snap is turned on. If I were to turn this off and then hover at the edge of these notes, we can see we can freely adjust the length of these notes, whether it's at the beginning of the note or the end. If we go ahead and turn the snap back on, our quantized value is set to 16th notes. So as you can, I'm sure you can imagine, this is now going to snap to those 16th note subdivisions. If I were to press two to activate our split tool, we can see that vertical line once again, snapping to our 16th note value. Let's actually change this to eighth note. We can see that's been updated. And now when I make splits to these notes, we're then cutting directly on that eighth note subdivision. Okay. Now if I press one to come back to the arrow tool, when I drag these notes left or right, we can see that our eighth note value is also affecting the movement, the horizontal movement of our MIDI notes. And if we'd like to manually add notes within the edit view, they're also going to be affected by the value that we have set here. So if I double click, then we can see that we've added an eighth note here. So let's go ahead and change this to quarter note. Now I'll double click and we can see that that's going to populate as a quarter note. Let's go ahead on up to a half note. We'll come to bar five, double click, and now we've added a half note. Let's left click hold and drag to select all of these and we'll just go ahead and delete those out. 
Now, if we take a look at some of these notes, they're not ending directly on the grid. This one is pretty much on the grid lines. This one is a bit over. This one is a bit over. And this one is not necessarily ending on a subdivision. But if we'd like to automatically quantize, we do have the ability to do that. So let's go ahead and left click hold and select all of these notes. I'm going to click on this AQ, which stands for our automatic quantize. I'll go ahead and click once. Now I'm going to change this to let's say quarter notes and actually let's turn the snap off so I'll press in select these and then just move these to be off the grid here okay our auto quantize let's select eighth note okay we'll come back to quarter we don't have these selected that's important these need to be selected first then we'll choose eighth note and pay attention to the notes there now we can see that all of those, once they're selected, are going to be moved to the nearest eighth note subdivision whenever we have the auto quantize activated. Now we'll go ahead and come out of the full screen for the editor by clicking on this downward facing arrow. And I just want to mention to kind of wrap up here that we do have a separate panel or actually these controls, the quantize settings here, are going to be different than what we have up in the arrange view. So in our arrange view, we have quarter note setting for our quantized value. Down below, we have eighth note. So these are going to be disc discrete settings for the edit view and arrange view. So just be aware of that. As well as our snap, you can see in our edit view, the snap is off. So that can function independently of our snap within the arrange view. Now we also have a quantized panel for finer control and other features working with quantization both in the edit view and within our arrange view. We've got the cue here, just clicking that. And we can see that we have this quarter note here. If I were to change this to the eighth note, then we can see that that updates here. Coming to the 16th note, that updates. If I click here with the drop down menu, come to quarter note, we can see that that changes here. And we can also determine if these values are going to be straight, triplet, quintuplet, and so on and some other features here that are beyond this tutorial. We'll take a closer look at that in an upcoming video. Okay, so talking about quantization and the different features and settings that are available within Studio One is a pretty deep topic, but I hope that this gives a good introduction for those of you who have maybe been wondering how you can make use of it and what it is. And we'll definitely go more into depth on these features in future tutorials. But for now, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial.